What's up guys, Iovo here and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Now in today's video, I am going to be showing you how to make your very own 3D YouTube background or banner using Photoshop. This is a very quick tutorial and all you'll need is Photoshop and you can make your very own 3D banner like the one you see right here. So before we begin, make sure to hit that like button down below. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is you want to open Photoshop and go to file and new to create a new file. You want to make sure it is 2560 by 1440. The color mode is RGB and the background is transparent. And then you want to go ahead and click OK. Now the first thing you need to do is find a background image. So what I've done is I've looked up a 4K asphalt background. And now this one isn't 4K but it's large enough for me to go ahead and right click and copy it and then go back into my Photoshop, press control, control V and paste it. And then I'm going to go ahead and press control T to select the photo editor. And then I'm going to press alt and shift so that I can drag it and enlarge it while still keeping it to center and scale. And once I'm done, I'm going to go ahead and press on the check mark. Now, once you have your background set, it can be anything you want. I've seen a really cool one done with like a space background and a brick background. So you can pick whatever backgrounds you want. You want to go ahead and you want to click on the new layer button on the bottom over here. And then you're going to go to the text tool. I'm going to make the text white and I'm going to type what I want. So I'm going to make my text say your enter channel but I'm going to make the bottom text smaller. I'm going to make it about 200 so that it's in line with your. And if you guys want to also change the spacing, you can go ahead, window, and then click on paragraph, and then click on character. And then right here, you can change the spacing. So I've already made mine 180. I'm going to go ahead and click on the check mark because my text is done. And then you can press Control T or Command T if you're on Mac. And once again, you can modify this element. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt it a little bit. Then I'm going to press the check mark. Now, if you want to center the text to the actual banner, you can go ahead and press Control A to select the entire workspace. You can go to the layers and make sure your text layer is selected. And then go to Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Vertical Centers to align it vertically. And then go to Layer, align layers to selection, horizontal centers to align it horizontally. And then you can press control D or command D if you're on Mac. Now the next step is to make sure that your text is actually 3D. So to make it 3D, you want to make sure you have the layer selected and then you want to go to 3D and new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And it's going to go ahead and make your actual text 3D. So the next thing we're going to do is modify the extrusion depth which is going to change how much your text is popping in or coming out. Now I want this text to be more pushed back because I want it to look like it's coming out of the asphalt. So I'm going to go ahead and move the extrusion and set it to 190. And then I'm going to click on the text color button and make the text more of a yellow color. And then I'm going to click on OK. And I'm also going to remove catch shadows and cast shadows. And then you can also modify your shape preset, which is basically the kind of 3D that you want. So as you can see, there's a lot of options, but I'm going to go ahead and select the second one down. So it looks more beveled. And then I'm going to go ahead and close these settings. Now in the 3D layer tab, I am going to find the layer that says your channel extrusion and click on this extrusion layer to open up the settings. Now, once you have these settings open, you can obviously change the shine, the reflection, and any of these settings to your liking. But I'm going to go ahead and change the diffuse color and make it darker than my current yellow color. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the specular color and make it even darker, almost so that it's like a grayish color. And then I'm going to click on OK. And I'm going to close this layer. Then I'm going to go to 3D and select Render and just let the text render really quickly. So once your text layer has rendered, you want to go ahead and right click on the layer and convert it to a smart object. 
And the next thing we're going to do is add shadows to the actual text so it looks more realistic. So you want to go ahead and create a new layer and you want to drag it to be underneath your text layer like so. And then you're going to go ahead and while this layer is selected, you're going to press control or command if you're on Mac and click on the your channel layer so that the actual text is selected, but you're selected on your new layer. Then you want to go ahead and make sure that your color over here, your foreground color is set to black. You're going to click OK. Then you're going to go to edit and you're going to go to fill and you're going to use your foreground color, which is black. And then you're going to select OK. And it's going to make a new layer of just the black, which is going to be your shadow. So now you want to press Ctrl D to deselect. And then while you're still on the new filled in layer, you're going to use the down and right arrow keys to move over this shadow. And then you're going to go into filter, blur, motion blur, and you can just play around with this, but I like to set it to 20 pixels and right now it's at 30 degrees and I'm going to press OK and it's going to make a motion blur. And then you can go ahead and right click on this motion blur layer. You can duplicate it and then we can go and go to filter blur and also add a Gaussian blur, which I like to keep at 10 pixels to really have it pop out, but you can obviously play around with it. And I think for this one, since the text is a bit bigger, I'm going to make it about 15 or even 20. Hmm, I'll keep it at 15 <laughs> and then I'm going to press OK and the actual text is done. Now, the only problem with using Photoshop to make 3D text is that it doesn't seem to mesh that well with the background. So to fix this, we're going to go to the very top layer and we're going to click on this half circle and we're going to actually click on gradient and make a gradient adjustment layer. So you're going to click on the one that's from black to transparent. And if it's not black right now, you can just click on the stopper twice and then you can make it black and click OK. And then we're going to click OK again. And once you have this color selected, you want to make the gradient style radial. And then we're going to make it reverse. So it looks like so, and your text is really focused in and everything else has a shadow and you're going to press OK. Then you're going to go to the opacity of this layer and you are going to bring it down to whatever you see is fit. This is mostly experimentation. I'm going to make mine about maybe a bit lower, maybe 50 and that looks good to me. And you can see it's already making a big difference. And then you're going to go ahead and create another new layer. You're going to go to your brush tool. And I made the brush size 2000 and I put the hardness on zero. Then we're going to make the foreground color a similar yellow. And we're going to be putting this on top of our text. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click. And right now it's a lot, but we're going to go into the layer settings and we're going to make it a screen layer. And then we're going to drop the opacity a lot. So I'm going to try 20 and I don't know, that looks good, but it still looks a bit too yellow. So we're going to make it 15, no, I like 10, so we're going to keep it at 10. And as you can see, once you add these two settings, it makes a really big difference to your banner. And at this point, you're basically done and all you have to do is save it. So you're going to go ahead and go to file, save as, and save it as a PNG. So I'm going to save this as your channel banner. And once you're done, you can click OK. And as you can see, in under 15 minutes, we've already made a banner that looks very similar. So that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. And if you did, make sure to leave a like down below. But as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo, and I'm signing out.